Hello, this is a tutorial about a new product for the Microsoft Office 2013 platform, specifically for PowerPoint. This is called Office Mix. Office Mix is a PowerPoint add-in and cloud storage service that allows you to do some great flip classroom activities, interactive lessons, dynamic multimedia presentations, where it allows you to take a PowerPoint that you've created or one that you have access to, like from a publisher, and within various slides or creating additional slides in that presentation, you can put interactive quizzes or polls inside. You can actually do a voiceover of a particular slide or of the entire presentation. You can annotate, if you have an image or a graphic on the screen, you can actually annotate that and discuss or demonstrate steps of a process really simply. Currently, right now, you have to have Microsoft Office 2013 in a Windows environment. As of this date, which is April 8th, 2015, there is no version of this for um, Office for a Mac. I actually have loaded um, Office for Mac 2016 in beta, and at this particular point, they do not have the ability to um, have Office Mix be part of the PowerPoint um, software platform. So right now, this is Windows only. So the first thing that you're going to have to do is to go to mix.office.com and load this, uh, this plug-in or this add-in for PowerPoint. I've already done that. So I'm going to go ahead and open up a presentation here. I'm just opening up a blank PowerPoint presentation just with a blank template. And notice that there is a new tab. This is the Mix tab here. And anytime that you're doing some work in um, the Office Mix, this is the tab that you will have to, to uh, click on. Most of the time you're in this home area and this is the toolbar that we're all familiar with. Allows us to do all the things that we want to do. You're going to be typing on the slide, you're going to be entering various things, and then if we want to do something we're going to flip over to the Mix tab. And this is where it gives us access to uh, slide recording and if you hover your mouse over any of these icons it'll tell you what they'll do. So this is the slide recording. So this allows you to actually record uh, on each slide or every slide a voiceover to what you're doing. You can also insert uh, quizzes and video apps. So essentially polls and various types of quizzes you can insert right into a slide. There's also screen recording, which is pretty much a screen capture situation. So you can insert an image and then do a, a voiceover on that particular slide. Uh, there's screenshot, which is grabbing what you currently have on your screen and taking essentially a photograph. You can insert video, you can insert audio. And then I said earlier in my opening remarks that it's an, also a, a cloud storage service for Microsoft. And what you get at the end is with this mix, once you use these tools, you actually have the ability to upload it to your Microsoft Office Mix cloud storage space, virtual hard drive space, that you can then access from anywhere. But from there, you have the ability to share it with anybody that you'd like to share it with. So it could be other students, any of those types of things. You could actually then uh, put a link together or information in a Blackboard shell in order to have your students access this material. Uh, we're going to probably do a couple of videos here because I don't want them to be uh, too long and I think there's some unique uh, tools that you might be interested in using so I'd rather spend time focusing on a particular tool. But just to give you a basic idea of some of the functions that you will be able to do. Um, you can record, as I said, you can write on the image, do what they call inking, which is to actually take various colors of digital pens or markers and uh, annotate or write, highlight right on your particular screen and all that gets captured. 
and then you can share it and it plays on multiple devices. So an Office Mix will play on laptops, will play on Mac devices, will play on iOS, Android systems. So it's a really great uh, tool. Again, to record, the only thing you can actually record on uh, using Office Mix is uh, currently right now on Windows PCs. So I'm going to go back to the Home tab here. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and open up a, a document that I've already started working on, just so you can see what it looks like when you have a presentation. So I actually have uh, kind of a PowerPoint here that I started working on for a presentation I have to do in about a week or so. And so you see here we have the individual slides. And I can, uh, on the Home tab here, I can do anything I need to do with any of these slides and any of these particular tools, just like we always would. I can add a new slide. I get down to the bottom here. And if I wanted to add a new slide, I just hit New Slide. We got our different types. And so now I've, I've added a new slide uh, right to this particular spot. And then, as you know, you can drag slides around, you know, all that stuff that you normally were able to do in PowerPoint. So if I was going to do something with the mix, if I needed to use one of those tools, all I have to do is click on this mix tab and it gives me the ability to do what I need to do. So again, screen recording, slide recording, record yourself, giving your presentation, add audio and video of yourself presenting and uh, write on your slides just like you would on a whiteboard. So this is essentially um, doing either a lecture or talking about um, some process doing a walkthrough explanation where you can do all of that on one screen. And then you have to uh, have the ability to insert a quiz or a poll or some type of uh, way of gathering some assessment material here. And the nice thing that I'll talk about probably in the final um, presentation of the Office Mix, so it'll probably be at least, um, at least tutorial three, if not four, depending on how many of these I have. But there actually are analytics where you have the ability as the instructor to um, do an analytical gather of data and report, and you can find out specifically how much time did people spend on your PowerPoint? How much time did they spend on each individual slide? How many slides did they go back to and view more than once? And yeah, on a quiz or a poll situation, specifically a quiz, you have the ability to figure out not only what did they get right or wrong, how much time did they spend on it. If you give multiple attempts of that quiz, you can find out you know, how many times did they need the maximum number of attempts to get it right or did they get it wrong every single time. It can kind of help you narrow your focus with that particular student, maybe with some one-on-one -on -one help or something like that. So these are the, the tools that I would use here. And I'll have other videos to show specifically about what I may want to do or how I may want to do this. But I'm just going to go back up to some of these other tools here and show you. Let's go to the first one here. In this particular case, I just added an image. And this is an image that I already had on my computer. So we'll be demonstrating that. This is a symbol. I actually got this right out of my home tab there and then just changed the color of the dollar signs. I have inserted a video here and we'll talk about how to do that when we demonstrate that particular tool. And in this case, here's a particular quiz. So this uh, subject area is time value of money. So assume that we had a few slides that would uh, maybe show a description or talk about it a little bit and then a little video explaining that. I decided that I wanted to do a little formative assessment at this particular point in the presentation. So I have this uh, quiz that I've entered in here. And as you can see, I have the ability to, to move it around and what have you. But <clears throat> I have put my question in here. And then I have um, this little light bulb area you can use or not use, and that's a hint. And then I have four choices of answers. I can actually have comments after each answer as to whether or not you got it right or wrong or anything that I want to say based on the selection. I can add more answers down here. And then there's going to be the default will always be a green check mark in the first answer choice. But you have to then move the green check mark to the correct answer if you are talking about a quiz. If it's a poll, then you're just gathering information, so you don't need to worry about that. 
and then you could preview this. We'll spend a lot more time talking specifically about how to insert a, a quiz going forward when I actually do that particular tutorial. This is an image that I went and grabbed to show you that you can insert an image um, off of the internet. So I just googled uh, images of Wall Street and ran across this particular image. So I was able to insert that. And then this is actually, I pulled up a website, Kiplinger's uh, Personal Finance Magazine website. And this is that screen capture where you can capture a segment of the screen. So this was an entire website. And I was able to just grab this particular image by dragging the grab handles that show up on the screen capture page. And I was able to insert that into this particular slide. So just an example of some of the things that you can do going forward. And again, we're talking about PowerPoint, which most instructors are very, very familiar with. You have the ability to use this mix tab, which is a PowerPoint add-in. You can use this um, to, to really kind of enhance what you're doing. You could pr produce this PowerPoint, get it out to the students, and they can actually, from a flipped classroom environment, you could have them work their way through the PowerPoint, take the quiz or quizzes that you have inside there, and have them do that before class, and then they show up to class ready to work, and you have the ability to go look at the analytics to determine who's doing well, who understands the content, who might still need some help, or if maybe you need to do some type of an overall discussion or review before the class actually gets started in person. So some really um, great things that you can do with it. Uh, at this particular point, if uh, the, the recommendation would be if you have your own personal device where at home you're going to uh, create your lessons and build your PowerPoints and work with your PowerPoints on your own machine and you have Office 2013, go ahead and go to mix.office.com, get this add-in uh, loaded, and then you can just go to town and do your own stuff. We're going to have a little bit of an issue if we're trying to do this with the campus computers. By fall 2015, all campus computers will have the uh, Office Mix, I'm sorry, will have the Office 2013 versions on the machines. But because nobody has system admin rights, we cannot add that add-in ourselves. That's going to have to be, you know, an IT tech person's going to have to do that. We're going to have some conversations to see if we can't make that part of the image. So that's not anything that you have to do. The other thing that I found out in trying to do it in a um, in a work computer is there's a, a tool, that quiz tool, when you actually go to insert the quiz question, there's different types of questions you can insert. There's multiple choice, there's true and false, there's short answer. So there's different types of questions. And in order to get the question type, it's actually an app. And you have to go to the Microsoft app store in order to get access to that particular question type. Once you load that question type, you don't have to go there every time. You can just go into your library of question types. However, right now from work, from Baker, in order to go into that question type, in order to get it, it defaults to using Internet Explorer, i.e. And the problem at the school is that we're primarily using Firefox and Chrome and IE is not really supported. So whenever I try to go in on my work computer and pull up one of those quizzes in the Microsoft App Store, I get an error message. When I did it on my own Windows machine at home, I had no trouble and it worked flawlessly and I actually built this particular um, mini PowerPoint practice here uh, actually at home. So just a couple of issues. So right now, until we get some of those bugs worked out at the college, you're probably going to be better off trying to actually build this activity at home, and then you can pull it up on any of the computers in any of the rooms that you're going to use. So this is basically a brief overview. I'm going to have a couple of more uh, tutorials for Microsoft Office Mix that are going to focus on some of the individual components of using the tools. Thanks.